Hey guys, Phil Smy here from Real Life Rails, and what I'm going to do today is because, you know, we just had Rails 7.2 released, I think yesterday, and what I'm going to do is upgrade a Rails app to use 7.2, and it was on, I think, 7.1 before. So let's give it a try. Uh, here we go. So I'm going to do this app that I'm working on called Magnet Maker, and I think what I'll do first, of course, is go into the actual thing <laughs> and now commits let's get add dot get commit minus m initial commit and uh, get status great and then let's get checkout minus b rails 7.2 so what's the rails version we got right now just out of curiosity is seven one three four so the first thing we're going to do is um update the rails so let's look at code insiders there we go and don't say that dun 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 and Let's look at the gem file. You can see we've got rails that. So let's um, update this to just be green and equals to 7.2.0. Let's do the same. And let's do a bundle. Now we might need to do a bundle update. Nope, there we go. Great. So that's been done. I don't think anything changes as far as the JavaScript stuff. So I don't think I need to change any versions JavaScript. I'm looking at the notes here, by the way, from that I'll, I'll put a link in the description. And I don't think anything changes. So what we can do is run this update task and see what happens. And that is Braille's app update. Well, let's see. First of all, Rails minus V now should be 7.2, right? There we go. So yeah, Rails app update what are we at it's gonna go through and it wants to change some stuff in the config let's see what the differences are ah, that's interesting okay we're changing from round brackets to square brackets uh, that's fine I think I can live with that And now in Puma, I, you know, the number of threads, if you saw in my video before, the number of threads has changed. So yeah, now ma max and min thread count has changed. And where's the plus? Now the thread count is three. The thread count before was five. I'm going to accept this change because I did not change this file myself. So um, if Rails wants to change it, go right ahead. And development, let's see what's different here. Okay. Oh, somebody added a period. Um, somebody decided to put this all in one line. Somebody added a comment. And yeah. Somebody's putting that in. That's interesting. So finally, 20 years later, finally, we're having default URL options in there. That looks like, oh, that's pretty incredible. We're enabling, that's interesting because it looks like it's on by default, but annotate rendered views with file names. And, oh, somebody added a period there. 
And this thing that I added has been moved, and auto correction by Rubocop has been added. So that all looks fine to me. And production has changed. I haven't put this app into production, so let's take a look there. And SSL options comment, I guess. And this other comment about action mailer. So that looks fine. Test, I'm not even going to look, but well, okay, I'll look. I didn't do anything because I'm not running any tests. It's pretty much the same, just comments and, and periods. Okay. And assets, that's interesting. So it is for removing node module bootstrap icons font. I'm not going to accept this change because I put in bootstrap icons font. So no, do not accept that. Filter parameter logging. Well, they decided to filter out emails. Okay, I'll look at that. Bin setup. What do we got? Uh, That's interesting, isn't it? So they've added it in by default, I guess. Everything else is comments. So yeah, let's take a look at that. That's it. So those were all the automatic things that copy to migration. I'm not quite sure why it, what the deal is with that. Oh, it's active storage upgrade. It's copied migration. So it's, um, oh, okay, that's right now. So it's put the migrations in for active storage, which I thought I would have had before. That's fine. So we can do a Rails DB migrate. Okay, and then it says to check with the thing I'm already checking. Um, and under the upgrade, I'll bring this file, this page over. Upgrading from Rails 7.1 to 7.2, all tests now respect the active job queue adapter config. Doesn't make a difference to me because I didn't have any tests in this. So in theory, that's it, right? So if I run, is there a proc file in here? Yes. Proc, nobody has done that. So foreman minus file, proc file dev. Could not find command under bar F. Wasn't there a bin like dev or something? Yeah. All right, so let's take that. Um, where is that thing? Well, did I close it? Yeah, let's bring you back to life. And there's our URL and Gosh, everything looks like it's working. So it looks like, yep, we're running a Rails 7.2 application. So there we go. Rails app updated. If you like these little kinds of videos, hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification. If you want some uh, real-life Rails merchandise, you can buy t-shirts and coffee cups and things like that, which would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. And uh, those should be available down below, or you can go to... I think it's shop.philsmy.com. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, and of course, you know, I've got some great courses on Gumroad and on Thinkific, uh, all covering all different kinds of aspects of Ruby on Rails.
So if you're looking for stuff for just as a beginner, or even if you're looking for stuff about using Rails with generative AI, check out those links and they'll be in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.